Well, I'm surrounded by generators and beer right now. What do you guys think this show is going to be about today? That's right, generators. <laughs> Here's a scenario for you guys right here. Your power goes off in your house. Your wife looks at you and says, there had better be some power on in this house in the next two minutes from now so I can have some lights on and I can have my microwave working. And you're, of course, you're, hey, we, honey, we got a generator in the garage, no problem. I'm gonna go fire the generator up, just relax. We'll get this going. You get out in the garage, you start your generator, everything works fine. You plug your, it, it's running fine. You plug your uh, extension cords in there to get some power in the house and your generator's not putting out any power. Are you really gonna walk in the house now and look at your wife? <sighs> yeah, sorry honey, I did everything I could. Generator doesn't work. Well, mercy, you are gonna get the stink eye like you've never seen the stink eye in your life. Guys, before you go tell your wife that, before you take this into a shop to get them to fix it, try this first. Welcome back to Steve Small Landing Saloon, everybody. Thanks for tuning in again. There's my website as usual, stevesmalllandingsaloon.com. Check my website out after the show. A lot of us, we got to face it. We have generators around our house for when the power goes out, for emergency power. Sometimes these generators sit for long periods of time. A lot of people don't know that uh, the generator end in, the, in one of these things has a little stored energy in there. It has to do with magnetism. It has to do with uh, the windings, field windings, primary, secondary, stuff like that. We're not gonna get into that kind of technology today. I've done this several times in the past where this actually works. Now, I do gotta give credit to one of our subscribers out there, Frank Cadillac. He commented on a couple of my uh, uh, other videos, my other generator videos, where he reminded me of this, that you can do this. Thank you very much, Frank Cadillac, for this. When your generator sits for a long period of time, it loses that, or it can possibly lose that stored energy in there, just from sitting. Now we need to get that stored energy back in there. There is an old school way of doing this that was taught at small engine schools, uh, service update schools years ago. It involved it, it taking a 12 volt battery, like out of your riding lawnmower or your car, hook up two wires to it, and then you take the end of your generator end off like that. And there's two little parts on there where you can take those two wires and shock it. Some people call it shocking, some people call it re-energizing, zapping, uh, flashing. A lot, most people call it a reflashing a generator to make that generator output power again. We're not going into all those details right now, I'm telling you that, because there is a better way to do this. A corded plug-in drill like this. A lot of people don't realize that a drill like this, it has a little electric motor in there. It actually will generate power if you spin it by hand. So here's what we want to do. Have it in the forward position as if you're drilling a hole through something. And that chuck is going to be spinning that way when you do that. Now, look at your generator and make sure that the fuses are good, or if you don't have fuses, make sure that the breaker is turned on like that. Plug your drill in, start your generator. Run your generator like, it, like you always do. Make sure everything's on and it's running. Wear a glove this time because the chuck 
has some, some chucks have some sharp edges on there right there. Now, hold that drill down, generator's running, hold the trigger on, and you know right here that, okay, this should be turning my drill. This should be working, but it's not working. Keep holding the trigger down and start spinning the chuck backwards again. Keep going, just rev it and rev it and rev it like that. What that's doing is it's generating a little bit of power and it's back feeding the power back through the cord into the generator and it's flashing the generator the same as if you were using that old school 12 volt. All of a sudden, you might find that all of a sudden the drill takes off on you and you're like, what? The drill's working now. You're holding that down and now it's running. Obviously, you don't have a drill bit in there or something like that. Have an empty chuck when you're doing that. But a lot of times, guys, that will work. If that doesn't work for you, well, there's something else wrong with your generator. But how easy is that to try that? Try that before you take it into a shop. I got to say this, guys, I'm talking about a generator here. We're talking about the one with a rotor and stator on the end of it that has these little copper windings in here when you look in the end like that. I know you got your inverters out there. You got your cycle converters out there. A lot of people call those generators because they generate power, but we're talking about the true generator with this rotor and stator and windings in there. And that's it. What an easy thing to try before you take it into a small engine shop and get them to fix it. You're probably going to get charged hundreds of dollars for them to do the same damn thing. Guys, I sure appreciate a thumbs up button for that one. Put some comments right underneath this video. Share this with your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And I am working hard on the next video as we speak. Can't wait for it. How was that for a half a can of Chromebacher? I think I'm pronouncing that right finally. Steve out.